Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. I hope that you are all well. And if you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. I think you will want to stick around for this one today because you are in for a real T-R-E-A-T. -E <laughs> the dogs are here, so I have to be careful. Um, there has been some foreshadowing in a couple of my previous videos that I had a surprise that I was going to introduce you to a couple of people, and today is the day. So two exciting things are happening today. If you've been watching my channel, I would say, well, at least since I moved to Calgary, <laughs> then you know that one thing that I was most excited about was that I was going to be living just a few blocks away from Calgary Central Public Library. It's beautiful. It's a newer building that opened on November 1st in 2018 and the architecture alone is just incredible. Plus, there's books. <laughs> and I mentioned that I would do a vlog to show you the library. Well, I'm sad to say that I still have not actually gone into the public library. Um, one of the reasons is because I wanted to take uh, the tour that they offer, and their tours have been closed because of COVID, so I decided to wait. Now, I do access the library online, so I am a supporter, but just using that space would be amazing and I just haven't done it yet. So second, if you've been watching my channel, I would say for at least the last couple of weeks, the last few weeks, you know that I follow Canada Reads and I attempt to predict the shortlist and the winner. And my friends at Canada Reads American Style, they have been so kind and they have included me when we interview the host of Canada Reads, Ali Hassan. And they have also invited me several times to be on their podcast. Well, this year, like many Canada Reads fans, I was so impressed at how well prepared the Defenders were and just how the show was done overall. I thought it raised the bar really high <laughs> for future Canada Reads competitions. Um, and if you've watched my last, I would say, few videos, then you may also remember that I was most impressed by Mark Tewksbury. Mark is a Canadian Olympic swimmer, he's an LGBTQIA2S plus advocate, and among many other things, he's a reader. On Canada Reads, Mark defended Essie Adugin's book, Washington Black, fantastic book, and he was spectacular. And if you watched or you listened to the show, then you might recall that Mark at one point said that he would ride his bike to the Calgary Central Public Library every day just to prepare for the show for Canada Reads. And he even showed at one point, he showed his library card and it's the same library that I've been waiting to tour. So I am going to take all of you with me because I am heading over to the library right now to meet Mark and his partner, Rob Maybe. Um, and Rob was very supportive of Mark throughout this whole process. And he is just an incredible human being himself. So you will get to see the library and to hear how Mark prepared for Canada Reads, um, what his experience was like, and how Rob supported him through that whole Canada Reads journey. So come with me, let's head over there now. It's a beautiful day here in Calgary. I'm gonna make my way over to the library. I'm standing outside of my building and this is the library there. And this is the library here, and you can see the Calgary Tower. So we're gonna walk over. It'll take me less than two minutes. We are so excited. It's Mark Tewksbury here and my partner Rob Maybe, and we are going to do a really fun special thing for Jolene called kind of Mark's Canada Reads prep because I just had such a great time getting ready for the show this year in 2022 
and it's fun to share it. And then if anybody else wants to see, you know, in future years, maybe it can be a, be a bit of a resource. So I think the first question, I think I'm going to ask Rob because he knows the answer. Where did this journey begin? All right. Well, I, I guess it, it started with me because I get the emails that come in from Mark Tinsbury's website. So it was a few years ago when the first request came in from Canada Reads if Mark was interested in joining the panel. Uh, I think it was 2018, so it would have been the 2019 year. And at the time, um, I'm, I'm a huge reader. My mom's a huge re reader and um, we go through books constantly. Mark, not a huge reader. At the time, he was... Compared to them. Yeah, compared to yeah. us, yeah. Um, at the time, he wasn't reading a lot. He was flying a lot and really writing a lot. So, but I was super excited about the request. It's like, oh, he's got to do it. He's got to do it. And most of what Mark was reading were the really good books that I'd already read and would pass on to him. So he was yeah, a little like my, bit of a... My curator. Yeah, kind of a curator, a really good book list. Yeah, it was really good. So going into my notes from a little book I keep, he had a, a great first call with Canada Reads. Rob kind of prepped me. Yeah. <laughs> we like talked about the about books about again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he had a really great first call and was set to do it and couldn't fulfill the, the week in the studio in Toronto. So um, was out that year. Couldn't couldn't be in Toronto when they needed him. So it just kind of died for a couple of years. And when COVID hit. COVID. And, and then when we did remember the year had already been cast, we were yeah. too late. Oh, so right. we're three years, three or four years later now. They reached out again. And uh, this time it worked out well. Oh, I, during COVID, Mark read all the time. Yeah. So he had his own book compiled of notes from the books. And they yeah. started looking at what book to read. What happens to me is when I read a book, I remember the feeling I get a lot, but I don't remember the particulars and character names and all of the intricacies necessarily. And so I felt like maybe I wasn't being a good reader. But I kept notes this year. Every time I read a book, I just, you know, did a little quick summary. And which was really useful when I talked to Canada Reads. I could share kind of the, the books that I liked. And I found it amazing. One of the steps of the process was we had to do like our, the books that we grew up reading. And in there was a 19th century novel, The Woman in White. And it's like, it made sense that I had so leaned towards Washington Black in the end. It was all there in my history and even in, in how I approach reading. But thanks yeah. to Rob, mm -hmm. ended up on the show. Mm -hmm. Yay! So we're going to take you through, and this is where I prepared, um, I'd say phase two. Phase one was getting all of, so first phase, first phase, well, Rob was fun. with me every step. So we got sent uh, books to, to sample. We didn't have a book off the top of our heads. It was, you know, the book that we wanted to champion, but we gave them a few criteria. Lots of criteria, sweeping for. epic. I wanted it big. I want to lose myself in something right now in the best possible way. I want it to be character driven, um, all of those things. So I wanted to transport me. And so we went through a few and I actually have them. I'm so glad I, I right from the get go, I had a notebook. So even those first ones that didn't work. And then we found Washington Black. And I hadn't heard of it. I didn't know even Essie or that she was a Calgarian for a long time. Um, and we loved it. Bob yeah, was like, yeah, we loved it. Well, remember you were like, first you know, pages. We were, we were so think we've got our book. Yeah. And we tried a couple others the same weekend and put them aside. But anyways, once we took the book, and once we read all five books, should I go to this book? Yeah. Okay, well, this, this is good. Then we'll take it. Once we read all five books, we had a little mock Canada Reads dinner. So we invited um, myself and Mark and three other friends that all read Washington Black and all also read another one of the, the books uh, this year and discussed them over dinner. And that's when Mark knew he had more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> From December to about March, that's the Mark Tux Free essay. <laughs> Little notebook. <laughs> I kept, um, this is my Canada Reads five books. I even put, look at this. I am Moni Yan. I didn't actually say it. It's in Cree, I think. But I, I thought one day I might do that, but I, I didn't do that in the end. Um, but I, this is the book that I kept my notes from all five books. And as as I went, I just kind of wrote things that struck out a beat, struck me. Um, from the back, we use this more as the technical. So Canada Reads past years, the different questions, panelists, how it went, just to get familiar with the show. And at one point, those two parts of the book collided. So this book got filled. It was also, I'd be talking to people randomly and they'd say something brilliant. So I'd make a note and I'd 
tape it in here. So this became like my little grab bag um, book. And then, so this is phase one of the project. Now we discovered the Calgary Public Library. I don't know what it was, but I had to go from this to getting ideas clear. Washington Black's such a big book. It's tough to, to get precise with it. That was my biggest yeah. thing to say, why should you read Canada Reads? I think, mean, oh. Let's just say during our mock dinner, Mark lost horrible. We had all our friends were passionate about the book that they were supporting. They gave him no um, wiggle, you know, wiggle no, around. Not an so. inch. I was like, wow. And honestly, before I even knew it, I was sidelined. I was out of the debate. It was like, that's how quickly it happened. So it was a great eye opener. I knew I had a lot of work to do. So um, the library, the library became the, the next place. part of the process. I would ride my bike here and then I would walk through the doors and I had never really been here. I'd been to an event. So I, I started by just exploring it and I found a spot to work in. So I think what we're gonna do is take you on, I hope they'll let us film, but That's we're gonna good. take you on the tour up to where I used to, I turn this into Canada Reads Magic. So as you can see, it's pretty overwhelmingly, spectacularly beautiful. And so it just was inspiring from the get-go. I felt like working from home was too contained and I was sort of, would have stuff everywhere and I just opened up here. And so I walked all the way up the staircases and all the way to the very top. And on the fourth floor, found a really beautiful space that I thought was perfect to work in. So let's pop up to the fourth floor and see where we go from there. I came to the library and I didn't really have a total plan. Like I kind of, I had a, a bit of a framework. I did some pages. I knew I wanted to go this way. I wanted to make notes like that because I wanted to get all five books out of here. So like I said, the first part I, oh, I, maybe I didn't say it. I, I read, first of all, Watched in Black a couple of times and that was most of the first part of this book. But then I get into the other books. And I start to sort of see Five Little Indians, the notes. Sort of Strange Paradise, the notes. That looks like what Strange Paradise is like. And I think the order we read the books in is interesting too. I asked the other defenders. A lot of people read my book early because it was big. And I think that if they didn't go back to it, that's a disservice to Washington Black because it's, it's so dense. I did notice in the show that sometimes the examples that the other defenders were giving were very Five Little Indian Scarborough specific. And so I don't know if you remember, but I would often jump in and just make sure that, you know, those are all great. And in Washington Black, this happened. Just to keep it level, not to try to steal, steal the attention, but just because I think that Washington required, uh, you know, a defender that liked it or got it. And I don't think that other than me, right? Malia got it and loved it, but she was fighting Scarborough and Kristen got it and loved it, but he was fighting for Five Little Indians. So I think it really came back to me a lot to do that work. So I was ready for it, thankfully. Um, this big book, 
The very first page are my notes, very little notes, but big, big, big impact on um, the mock Canada reads that Rob talked about. So our friends, I would say we didn't actually vote, but we all agreed that the argument for Scarborough was so strong that I think that it really surprised me. I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming. So I knew I had to do some work. I listened to the interview with Omar and, and Tarek, and then off I went. I started to create some theses. So this was like Washington Black, why should it, we can, why should it win Canada AIDS and different things. This was the journey of self-discovery that turned into its own kind of three-page <laughs> argument. Just letting myself flow. And then I, Malia's interview with Catherine. So just, you know, getting all of it. And then I thought I'm going to compile all of this into the themes that I took from past Canada reads. So I went resiliency. And then I went home or freedom or all of us had a very similar kind of feet like area like that journey of self-discovery authentic complex relationships that this came in really handy for some of the days when we'd be thrown a topic kind of last minute relativity this was a huge one that I saw that I had to win because it's like set in 1830 against five Indians in Canada 2020 to, you know, it, it's a tough one. So that was a lot of arguments. Hope, that was a big theme from pastors. That didn't come, oh, funny enough, that became huge for me against What Strange Paradise in the end. Maybe that's why it was such a strong, I don't know if you remember that, but on day two, I really said, I'm surprised you chose hope as your theme. <laughs> uh, oh, this became my thesis and looks really overly organized it wasn't it just came out like this and then I put it in blocks of ideas so that I can mix and match and throughout the week see how I have a yellow check some days parts of the argument would come out so I'd pull them out and then I I'd leave room for the other arguments on other days if it was still room and then observations that was just a place of sort of gathering and one of my favorites craftsmanship and you know look at how much craftsmanship I have so I always put Washington Black first and then I sort of <laughs> the others in for comparison and then I just went to like general tactics and some quotes and things that made Washington black relevant in today's world um, some opening argument drafts I started to go there and I thought you're gonna lose your mind if you do that the connectivity of things I was like that's too much okay that's for me why I'm starting to become crazy cat lady with the books it's like whoa stop on that line but I did then go kind of you know what are the biggest arguments going to be and I, I was worried it was going to be it wasn't a book of the moment I'm, I'm really proud of the panelists for not making their books more like the refugee crises of the moment or the residential school crises of the moment I thought they, it was done but it was done really well and then I knew, remember, I, I was worried about my writing, that it was too good. <laughs> not that it was not artful, but that it was too good. <laughs> it's all good. So, so at least I had some things ready when that argument came. So that was kind of the, that, so it took me four days just to get Washington Black into all those categories. And then it took me two days to get the other four books and all the other notes into their categories. And then it took me two days just to kind of let it sift. And Rob right knows, right here, right in this very spot, this like indigenous um, language resource center at the Calgary Public Library. It just felt so, well, you feel it just feels, I was in my zone, I could just do it. I'd come, I never had a schedule, I never set a time. I worked till it just felt like I was done that day. And it was so organic. That's why it was so fun. I, I, I know I went a little overboard. I do know that. Like, <laughs> but it was, it wasn't, it was just so fun. It wasn't done like to try to win. And I'm, there wasn't that, of course I wanted to maybe win, but it was just like, so nice to get all those ideas into sort of an order. And I remember Rob, remember I'd come home and I'd sometimes be like, oh, after five days, I'm like, oh my gosh, here's an argument. Here's a here's a crack in Five Little Indians. I found a, you know, after all this thinking, I found a place that I can go that maybe will work. In the end, it didn't, open, it didn't work. It wasn't as strong as I thought it was. But, but that that process of letting that happen, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was amazing. Um, 
when I was here working the library, the stickers weren't on yet. I did, mm -hmm. I did put like Canada Reads Prep One, and that's why I covered them because I realized, why am I? Why? <laughs> I don't want to walk into the studio with all these Prep One. What happened was this book turned out to be too big for the set. I knew, I mean, I used it and it was there. I loved having it on set, this one too. But this book was the book, these two. So th this, you remember Washington Black was this way and I had a st stack, which was perfect because I had this book behind them and I would open it this way. Same, I used the same structure that I prepared on, but look at the difference. <laughs> It's just too big, right? So this was ideal. And and then if I needed the resource, it was there, but you can see I just hit it. You didn't even know that I was reading. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. You didn't even know I was reading behind the stack of books. So it was it was perfect. And this was the show book. And I'm really glad I had a separate book. So there's the opening that you'll remember. You'll remember. <laughs> and then you can just see like, if you notice the show, I was often scribbling and making notes and that was always in here this was the second day you can see the drafts of the opening and then got there so that's day two and that was about essie and the craftsmanship and i loved that day what's fun sometimes is what you don't see is like in the uh, so at night the night before you learn about what the next 60 seconds will be and then in the morning you get a run of the show and that's when they know the themes you don't learn till the day of the show and also they'll say things like, you might have a possible 30 second at the end. And the first day they did that, I didn't have anything ready and they actually went to it. This day they, um, they didn't go to it, but I had something ready. But anyway, that was, and just finally all my notes from the show, but then got to, oh, there's a lot of notes in that time. There we go, the final 60 seconds. So that gives you an idea of the number of notes that happen also between shows. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about working with Essie? Yay, Essie. Where is she? <laughs> so there she is. Yay, Essie. Um, I mean, it was, I was a little bit awestruck at first um, because I was like, loved the book so much and the writing so much in particular. And she's like the most disarming, lovely, humble, soft spoken, fun, <laughs> intelligent, right? Like, she's just terrific. We love her. And she became a friend through the process, also with Rob. Like she's, we, we learned things about each other and um, like she she likes clothes. And so she happened, we were talking and I said, oh, I've got to go because I've got to get ready to show the stylist. Like you have to sort of vet your clothing. Um, and she said, let me see, let me see. We had <laughs> such a riot showing her the outfits that we're going to wear each day. And she said, oh, wear that on opening day. So like, even not that, she was not involved like micro magic at all we shared the experience even to the point of like okay like essie i'm gonna wear this today for opening and and little known fact that outfit i won the opening day was actually the closing ceremony outfit of team canada minus the puffy jacket and i just put on a jacket and a scarf so i kind of felt like uh, i was in, in good clothing but essie she's like she loved my reading of the book. She called me like just a, a, you know, a great reader and she's honored to have a reader that was so sensitive. And, and she really, we talked about themes a lot. She helped me early days. Like I would just sit there and I'd, I'd ask her like, well, you tell me why should Washington Black win Canada Reads? Or what's Washington Black about? And she'd start talking to me like, ooh, I can't keep up. I'd say, stop, 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 stop. And what's so fun to look, even just doing this today with you, Jolene, like looking at my arguments, how they change so much. And some of them never saw the light of day that were the ones out of the gate that both S and I thought would be huge. Even the surveillance of the black man, the black body, that made it to the show, but it wasn't like a, a huge thing. Again, because of the direction the debate went, mm -hmm. I didn't have to go to those heavy themes. And But, but she was terrific. Like, you know, so many, the, the, the truth versus versus falsehoods, right? The, the first fake news was cousin Philip telling them that Mr. Wilde was dead in the Arctic. And that became an entire sort of part two of the book was, was getting to dispel that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, I, and talking about the book like that with Essie, like I'd be pinching myself sometimes. And, and I'd also go like, I know I'm gonna ask you something and people probably do all the time and, and, and you won't answer me. And she said, exactly, because it, it, it's a human being. It's not complete, it's, it's, it's life. It doesn't wrap up, it's, I don't know, what do you think? You know, I was like, oh, I love it. <laughs> So she's great, and she's great. And we'll have a, a legacy of a friendship, I'm pretty sure. That's one of the greatest benefits of being on the show. In the in the debates, yeah. <laughs> um, when you were voting off, at one point you voted off Five Little Indians, and you said- On day three. On day three, just to say, I want you to make sure that there's a vote against Five Little Indians. Can you describe why you did that and explain that a little bit to us? Well, I just think as a book that has had a vote against it each day, yeah. to go in to the final, if that happened for my book, against a book that has had no votes, gives a real advantage to that other book. So I just wanted to level the playing field a little bit. And I only had two choices. <laughs> on my ballot, there was just five little Indians in Scarborough. And so I just, on, in that moment, opted for so it. So admittedly, there's a tiny distraction of toilet flushing sometimes up here. But other than that, no one came to this floor except to use the washroom. So it was peaceful, minus that. So when I was in the zone, it didn't bug me. But today's interview is quite funny. <laughs> like, what to read next is... Um, I'm trying not to make too big of a deal out of it because it's like, I'm going to find something at the library today. I went to read um, Half Blood Blues by Essie, but I realized I just need a break from all things Canada Reads, including my favorite new author, um, to appreciate it more when I come back. You know, Washington Black, the character, and the book have literally been in my head since the end of November. And it's impossible not to compare a new character to Washington Black, right? Like I just, I, so I need to do um, some distancing to go back to SE. But so I don't know what, I, as we walked up here, I showed you like some of the history books and the art books and stuff. I might choose something like that. Or I might just go, there's new releases at the library as well. So I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. And my partner is the book buyer. So I'll have to follow, he, he's also my curator as you saw at the beginning. So hopefully Rob's gonna keep curating really good books for me. I've got some things in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So Mark, everything that you've shared with us so far has been very positive. Is there anything that maybe was not as positive in your experience with Canada Reads? Well, what's interesting is I think we kind of have to keep kind of siloed in a way as the as the defenders you know I originally thought when we were launched that we'd become this big group together but that doesn't happen it only happens during showtime and then it's it, it is the closest thing I've had it's kind of like no kidding like not just the book Olympics but like an intellectual Olympics like you have to go out there you have to be ready you have to you know each day somebody's like not going to the final and and the olympics goes on like it's really amazingly similar in some ways so i really appreciate how that has to unfold the, we never got to come together as a group though and i think i took people out for rob and i took people out for dinner on one of the nights just because the non-toronto people are people that had never been there we wanted to take them to a restaurant to show them a bit of toronto but Kristen wasn't there he already had friends in the city so one recommendation, if anybody cares, like who will organize a lunch for the defenders all together or even a cocktail that afternoon because the, the winner has to go do stuff. But something that brings us all together would be magnificent. So I throw that out there. CBC might want to do it, but if not CBC, then who? <laughs> who in our book club world wants to say we'll host the, we'll host the defenders? That would be fun. Because we you get to know and like people. Well, we did anyway, I guess not every year is, is like ours, but we really, you know, we liked each other. And I was so surprised that Suzanne voted my book off day three because we liked each other so much, but that's how it should be. It wasn't about personality. It was about what we felt for the books. I, and I respected that people had their own criteria. So like Suzanne, I think she said right out there, hers was, did it touch me? Could I, was I moved? Right? And, and she was. So th th those books did my book for whatever reason. Oh, did she cry? That's what it was. Did she physically cry? And she didn't in Washington Black. You know, I did. But I can't hold that against her. Cry! Come on, Suzanne, cry! <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it, it was such a great experience. I recommend it to anybody.
the, there's a group shot taken when many of the defenders went out for dinner on this Tuesday night, day two of the competition. We were actually on our way to go see the movie Scarborough when we realized how do we, well, and the show helped us realize, how do you separate your emotion from reading the book from the emotion you might have from watching the film? And so that's why we ended up at dinner. We were actually supposed to be going on an outing to see the film because it's showing so few places and it was showing in Toronto. So Malia wanted to see it. I'm really glad we didn't. And I think that just is another little note of how much we kept it about the books. Um, there's lots of film projects related to different things we were doing, but we kept it always about the books. That's kind of reads. So a little behind the scenes story. What is one thing that you wish you had said and didn't get a chance to say? Oh, it's a great question because time goes so fast when we're all jumping in. But you know, one thing I thought, I thought Tarek was really not loving Washington Black. That was clear. But I was surprised because I thought that Washington Black was actually the closest character to Tarek's real life experience because as a new Canadian, I kind of heard in his interview with Omar that he's walking that line of who am I versus what does what do Canadians want me to be or how do they see me and that friction that I felt like Washington Black walked that I certainly could relate to um, that I made that argument on day three so I was really glad in an email I got to share that with Tara and um, yeah it, it, there's lots of stuff that gets left on the table which is why you have to be so ready i think because when you do get your couple minutes you want to make sure to make it count that's the one thing that i i might have thought i could sway him with that but i never got the chance to say it to him when it counted Well, as you can see, the Central Public Library here in Calgary is beautiful. The video at the end where you see the C train, as in the letter C for Calgary, actually goes underneath the library. And when this was built, it was a huge engineering feat. It was the first time in Calgary's history that an active LRT line was encapsulated and used as a foundation for a building above. So I thought that that was kind of cool. And I don't know about you, but I found Mark's process for preparing for Canada Reads fascinating. I mean, I did my best to not drool over his notebooks. His hard work and preparation is so evident in those, and his passion and excitement for Washington Black and for Canada Reads, you know, still really shines through. 
and I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to spend some time with both Mark and Rob today and to finally see the library and before I left I made it official and I got myself a library card so I will be spending some more time you know in there from from now on I I, I think it's just lovely and I want to say a huge thank you to Mark and Rob for their time today for showing me the library and for sharing their experience with Canada Reads. Um, I absolutely loved it. They were so kind to say yes. I will put links to both Mark and Rob's websites in the description box below, so please be sure to go and check those out. I want to thank all of you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tour as and all of the information as much as I did. Um, as always, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to chatting with you there. Enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.